this is going to be a vlog that I might regret very quickly. <laughs> Hi, my name is Michelle and uh, welcome to this video. I know that people are sick of all these horror vlogs and I don't care. <laughs> so I'm here to deliver another one. This is going to be an experiment. Let me introduce you. <laughs> so, hi, uh, this uh, experiment is called, as you could see from the title of the video, this experiment is dedicated to me reading the most messed up books that I could possibly get my hands on. I scoured the internet. I decided that there are some books that I do not want to read for time reasons. <laughs> but I have a selection of these four uh, that I'm going to be reading. And these should all be messed up to some degree. So I scoured TikTok and I discovered a person talking about these books or... I looked at some articles and looked at what they were saying and this is what we came up with. There are certain books that I didn't get my hands on this time around because maybe I will do a part two. Those include Come Closer or something by Jack Ketchum, anything by Jack Ketchum. I don't have those. And before we get into it, I have already read Gems, Light, Tender is the Flesh or Exquisite Corpse. They have been read. It's over. <laughs> um, Exquisite Corpse right now stands as the most messed up books that I have ever read and I read it when I was way too young. I can also tell you that so I don't know if anything will dethrone Exquisite Corpse because that book, whoo, it's something to stomach. Okay, let me introduce you also to the choices that I have here. So the first one is The Body in Question by Jill Clement. This I found on TikTok. Um, roll the tape. The Body in Question is also very small and it's so so interesting about jury members who were on a murder trial please check the trigger warnings for this though it is very 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 dark and it involves children but it's about them going through the trial and then them in prison uh, present day and it's just it's so good i've read books similar to this that i absolutely hated but this one was just done so much better plus i love the cover it's so creepy this is i think probably the least messed up book on this list um this just was described as very very dark and all I know is that it's about a trial um but that's all <laughs> that's all it's supposed to be dark I'm really wondering in what way shape or form and I'm wondering if I should be worried about that but we will see next up I have tentacle which is also very short honestly I didn't look at the page numbers when I was purchasing these over the last few months but it just worked out that way <laughs> so this is another shorty this is translated um let me look Oh, okay, Santo Domingo. I think the author is from the Dominican Republic, I want to say. I think so. If there was only... Yes, is a Dominican music composer, producer, and key figure in contemporary Caribbean literature. So we're gonna read this. This I found in an article. I will try to link it down below, or I will try to insert a screenshot here. But honestly, I don't know if I'll be able to trace it because I wasn't even like, I was just Googling on my phone. You know how it goes. And somebody said that this was twisted as hell. And honestly, all I remember is that it's kind of a maid-driven story. Like the main character is a maid. And I'm really worried about the fact that this is called Tentacle. Listen, Tentacles and me, we don't... That's not pleasant for me. <laughs> I don't want to read about no Tentacles. And here I am with a book called Tentacle. I think I'm gonna be freaked out by that just because. <laughs> Next up we have a book that was on everybody's lips last year. I just didn't read it for some reason and that is Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Like Spoke by Eric LaRocca. I remember when this was released I think last year. I think I first saw it in Kayla's video from Books and Lala when she was reading it and she was just like what the fuck is going on and people are saying that this is extremely disturbing, extremely twisty and extremely dark so I am really wondering. This is the new edition that came out I think last month or something like that. So there are two extra things. There's um, things have gotten worse since we last spoke. Then there's the enchantment and you'll find it's like that all over. All these titles, I don't know how Eric Loraka does this, but these titles are top tier. So this is the next one that we'll be reading. I know it's like mixed media, I think. And that is promising to be like a creepy pasta level of creepy, which... I'm game for, always. And, and then I have the Pierce de Resistance, um, the book that everybody calls the most fucked up book that they have ever read and not giving it ratings on Goodreads because apparently it is that bad. And that is Dead Inside um, by who? Chandler Morrison. I also saw this review <laughs> by Kat, 
which you know I kind of trust get <laughs> with these reviews this kind of review so I am worried I feel like this is going to be this if any of these has a chance of dethroning um, exquisite corpse I feel like it's this one it, she, it could do it it could happen I think with this one dead inside um, the cover though uh, is completely gorgeous and I am having a love affair with this cover because it's just everything to me. So these are the books that I'm going to be reading over the next week or so. I would like to read these within a week or maybe even less. Who knows? And I will be letting you know. I kind of um, made an order of how I'm going to read them. And I think I'm going to start with the body in question. So I will update you when the time comes. But I'm excited and worried extremely worried <laughs> let's see how this works out i started the body in question yesterday i'm sorry about the light i don't know what's happening i don't like the fact that winter is coming <laughs> um i'm here it reads pretty fast i am on page 58 currently out of 170 four i understand why people call it dark for sure this is essentially about a murder trial and the jury it focuses on the jury especially specifically on a 52 year old woman and a 41 year old man and um i find it very fascinating the murder trial itself is pretty dark it is about this uh, teenage girl who was accused of um murdering her 18 months old brother step brother really because she was adopted some years ago and on the side of it but I feel like almost the trial is on the side and on the side of it um, this these two people on the jury who are completely preoccupied with other stuff that's uh, happening in their lives and to them and between them specifically and I find it really interesting and fascinating I think it is really well written it's very matter of fact it's very almost detached but not in a Sally Rooney way when you feel like it's kind of just like this like repression of feeling mm. it's more like it's just very detached like we are observing the characters it almost makes you feel like you are part of a jury and the trial that you're watching is these two people completely disregarding all of the dark shit that's happening at court when they go there and focusing more so about on the attraction that they feel towards one another because they pretty much start an affair um, she is married uh, he is currently single but she is married and normally I really do not like cheating in books but I feel like this is kind of a commentary on exactly that you know where we are getting very little information about a trial itself because they are both so preoccupied with you know thinking about one another and about each other and at the same time when they are talking together they are not talking about the case because obviously that's forbidden but when they are talking about their experiences and when they are asking each other about their experiences it almost feels like one of them is taking the stand and the other one is kind of questioning the other person because it's just like this rapid fire questions about what they did or what they wanted to be when they were young and so on so it's a very interesting play on, you know, a courtroom drama, I would say. And I feel like it's also a discussion on true crime because, you know, um, true crime channels are on the rise. People are watching whole 20, 30 hour trials live and they are pretty much detached from what is happening on a screen in front of them, which I feel like this is also commenting on. Is it messed up? I guess in the way that it discusses um, the happenings and the what's going on it is pretty messed up but i'm really enjoying the discussion that it's trying to have i'm really interested to see how this will end up because i thought that it was this was supposed to be kind of dual storylines you know one while the trial is happening and then uh, in the present as if the trial was in the past and now in the present we are not in the present yet so we'll see what happens there but so far i'm really enjoying it and i am really commending the craft that went into this i'm not going to say that it's like that it has beautiful lyrical writing or that it's like the best writing that i've ever read but i feel like it's very fitting for the kind of story that it is and what it's talking about so i'm really enjoying the discussion 
it, I feel like it is packing a lot into such a short book. I'm just wondering if it will try to pack too much into such a short book. So I will keep you updated, but so far I'm having a good time. About approximately 45 seconds ago, <laughs> I finished the potting question. Is the day after I am met up with my friends today. We had a lovely time. We chatted for like four hours. Um, it was great. And then I went home, read for a bit, watched Halloween. 20 years later. I'm watching these movies completely out of order, but you know, <laughs> that's what happens sometimes to get in the Halloween spirit. And then I sat down and finished the body in question. Let's talk about the book in general. I think in the end, it did kind of try to pack more into it than it could bear given its length, in my opinion, because we are talking about the trial. We are talking about the interpersonal relationships. We are talking about cheating. We are talking about adultery. We are talking about chronic illnesses. We are talking about, you know, significant others being diagnosed with uh, cancer and so on and so on. And I feel like it just did way too much for 176 pages. On the fucked up scale, I would give it like a, in the end, like a 3.5, honestly. Um, obviously, the trial part is very difficult to read and it is very dark. But ultimately, I was also kind of struggling with that part. We'll get to it in a minute. Overall, I would give it a 3.5. So not very fucked up at all, in my opinion, if we are truly looking for something that is messed up. I will warn for the use of the R word, which I don't know what is necessary. I will also say that there was one instance, I don't think I will be able to find it and I didn't have tabs with me when I read it because I was in bed, I'm pretty sure, like pretty late at night. So I didn't have tabs with me, but it was something, some kind of emotion or some kind of feeling, if I can find it, I will put it here, that was compared to how the Nazis... Um, arrested the Jews during World War II and it just felt kind of very tasteless, if you know what I mean. And uh, for some reason, uh, the defendant, um, it was brought up like halfway through the book, out of the blue, as uh, part of the damning evidence, it was brought up that she had been diagnosed uh, with autism. And that is a whole other discussion that we can have. Um, within the genre, uh, outside of the genre, and how people who are diagnosed with autism are treated in these books and what it actually represents if we are really going to have the discussion, which the discussion is not had. It's like two lines in the whole book where it's mentioned. And consequentially, in like the very last chapter, um, it's kind of implied that the R word is used kind of in correlation with that. And I just didn't think that, that was tasteful in any way, shape, or form either. If anything, it was like weirdly ableist and not really good. So that is definitely something that we didn't even need to dip our toes into. If you're not going to do it right, this is not the representation that the community needs, in my personal opinion. In terms of what fucked me up more uh, in this book, rather than the trial or the fact how we were treating the adultery and the cheating and the trial itself as the jurors, um, what fucked me up more was uh, a specific significant other getting diagnosed with uh, really, really rapid cancer and dying within the span of like 20 pages. I have extreme health anxiety and my biggest fear is like my loved ones being diagnosed this way and myself being diagnosed this way and passing this way. So I was hashtag triggered out the freaking roof so that was the most difficult part for me to read and it didn't even have like anything to do with the main <laughs> main plot of the story so of the book so i don't know um this is done i think i'm going to give it a three we'll see what copile says but if i had to say i would probably say a three star read so not the best start but you know that also means that hopefully we'll just go up from here <laughs> i think i'm going to get started on my next read which is going to be tentacle this is my translated book but this is my shortest book i'm pretty sure the shortest book on my tbr it ends on page 132 but it does look like it's going to be a little more dense so on the denser side so we'll see how this goes uh, no clue what this is about uh, what i told you in the intro clip is all I know. <laughs> so I will update you on that later and we'll see where we go. It is currently Thursday around, I want to say three, but I could be wrong. Around three. Let's go with around three. I didn't get that much into it. I stopped on page 28. So I have about 104 pages left. And okay, I can tell you kind of what it is about. I've read reviews that says that this is like 
spread over time in three different time or time periods in the Dominican Republic. So far we're seeing like the near future. I think this was published in 2015 or 16 and this is referencing like to 2024 or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, and this is like in the near future where um, we have some kind of monsters roaming the streets but we are following this um, sex worker turned mate for this um, spiritual advisor to the president and that's all I know <laughs> honestly we get some insights here and there to her life and to other people's lives <laughs> essentially but nothing of import I will say that I understand why this would be on the list of like things to mess you up because it is very crass um, which it feels kind of gratuitous. Is that how you pronounce that word? We don't know. Um, and I don't know if like that's on purpose or if it's um, not. <laughs> I don't know that I would say that I'm enjoying it so far, but you know, it's okay. I'm also confused how to refer to the main character because she, her pronouns are used throughout, at least in the first 30 pages that I've read. But it's also mentioned that this person wants to transition. So... I'm very confused. I'm very confused whether this person just doesn't want to label themselves or if uh, we are going to switch pronouns. I will update you on that later, but so far I'm very confused <laughs> about that. And there's also another character that we just got introduced to, like literally like two pages ago, essentially, who is some form of queer and I know that he's not like 20-ish. I know that he's like a little older, probably middle-aged, something like that, or maybe 50-ish, I don't know. Um, so far that's all I can tell you and I will update you when I know more, if I know more. Because <laughs> kind of lost, not gonna lie, a little bit lost. Hello, I just finished Tentacle, again like five seconds ago. I don't know what's up with this vlog that I just keep updating you literally five seconds after finishing whatever I'm reading. I don't have much to say to you. <laughs> okay. Um, the last time I fully knew what was happening in this book was the last time I updated you and I summed up what I knew. And that's pretty much... All the complex knowledge that I have of this little novella. This was so freaking confusing. I feel like at least half of it completely went over my head. Which, like, I'm not the smartest cooking in a jar, so <laughs> it is possible. But what I also find weird is that, um, okay, the main character is actually a trans man. So in the second half of the book, we are using he, him pronouns, and I feel like they're definitely would have been a better way of going about it so we wouldn't have to misgender him for the first half of the book first of all second of all i'm sorry i misgendered him because i'm pretty sure i used different pronouns when i was updating you on this book because i didn't know any better um and i feel like there are ways to do that that are way more nuanced and more subtle and more respectful but overall i also feel like this book in general could be more respectful because even though like I understand the connections between these things. Um, I do not understand why there were so many N-words in here, because to my knowledge, the author is not black and neither is the translator. And I also do not understand why we have to have the F-slur so many freaking times in this book. Like, I never want to see that word again in my life, like, in general. But especially after this book, because it's there so many times, and I hated it. Um, I feel like I didn't get everything, but towards the end, I definitely understood, like, what we were doing and what was happening and what the different storylines were and how they were connected. But it didn't make me buy it. I feel like I'm going to give this two stars and I'm gonna straight up give it like a one on the messed up scale that we have going because I don't think it was that messed up other than it was disrespectful. So this was a bust completely, but hopefully the next two I'm holding out for those because next I'm gonna read. Things have gotten worse since we last spoke and possibly the other two stories in here depending on how much I enjoy. Things have gotten worse since we last spoke. So we'll see that, but I'm gonna read this next and then that inside is going to be the last one. Um, very happy to be done with this, <laughs> not gonna lie to you. And because we're at the halfway point, so two books down, two to go, two are pretty meh. Hopefully these other two will be top tier. I'm going to give you a little b-roll because, you know, I know you all like it. <laughs> Everybody likes b-roll to kind of see the live so i'm gonna give you some clips now and then we can continue with eric laraka
Natasha update you. I stayed up until 2.30 uh, reading this yesterday because I ended up reading all of it. So the first story in here is obviously the titul titular, is that how you say it? A story, things have gotten worse since we last spoke. And then there's the enchantment. And the last one is, you'll find it's like that all over with, with the last one being... Um, the shortest one, around 20 pages or so. So, but let's talk about the main story in here. I liked all of them, I will tell you that. But um, the first one, I think it's like a 4.5 for me in terms of my star rating. Um, I feel like I understand why people... <laughs> I feel like I understand why people don't want to tell you what it's about because I do think that it's best to go in not knowing unless you look at the trigger warnings, which I would recommend looking at because the first one is definitely the most disturbing of the three and it does come with trigger warnings, so I would look those up. Um, but I understand why people don't don't say what it's about exactly. I do have a wish that people discussed it more because I feel like I have found somebody in Eric LaRocca who can write so much into such a short little something. <laughs> I feel like this is like a big discovery for me, like an epiphany. Like I should have known maybe, but I didn't. So it's an epiphany for me because, okay, without telling you what it's about, I feel like it is a really good discussion on, you know, obsession on fear of abandonment and fear of rejection and the lengths that people go to in order to satisfy other people's needs even when we don't really logically or rationally think about what that fulfillment would look like to them we go to our own lengths to fulfill needs that we are not even certain of that they exist and i feel like it's written in such a clever way where so many things are omitted but somehow it works together and i can say this about all of the stories in here they have you know sometimes when you read something disturbing let's talk about the first one let's talk about things have gotten worse since we last spoke. I feel like sometimes you have this kind of disturbing shit and it's kind of just, you know, what you get is what you get. There's not much else behind, beyond the surface level or not beyond the face value that you get when you read that disturbing thing. Some things are disturbing for the sake of being disturbing, but I fear, feel like <laughs> Eric Rocca really succeeds at writing more than that when they write a story like this, it is more about what lies underneath the disturbing shit rather than just the disturbing shit, you know what I mean? So even though this was disturbing, I feel like he really managed to capture something fascinating, something that is very human and very gross at the same time but the grossness is like the perfect device in order to explore a specific something in his story when we talk about the second one the enchantment i feel that one is completely different but at the same time there are things that are very similar there are similar themes to them it definitely feels like these three stories belong together and there's a reason why they have been put together in one collection because there is something that binds them together and it's this feeling of, you know, trying to reach for something that you don't think you will actually ever reach, you know, and the kind of abandon that comes with that, I suppose. Overall, this was really fantastic. I will definitely be buying more from them because it was just a really good experience with this book. It gave me more than I was anticipated than I anticipated because I was expecting to be weirded out. I was expecting to be, you know, grossed out maybe, but I really didn't think that it would find me at 2:30 just staring at my ceiling thinking about life and the experience of life and all of that around it. So, really good. If we are talking about our grossness spectrum and let's talk about the titular story because that's why I wanted to read this, you know, the rest is kind of just like I couldn't not read it because I was enjoying it so much and I really love how he writes. <laughs> His writing is really good. Um, so let's talk about the main one because that's for this vlog. Um, I would give it a solid 8. There are moments where I could not believe what the fuck I was reading. <laughs> I was like, what is going on? So a success, this for sure. It was really, really good. And that means that we have one book left. So let me grab it. And that brings us to that inside <laughs> which again this cover is superior to anything else ever um it is very short as well 
it is 162 pages it seems like it's going to be readable and i'm really wondering if this is the case of it's disturbing just for the sake of being disturbing i finished dead inside i didn't finish it in one go i read about 100 pages yesterday and then i finished the remaining 62 while i was waiting for clients to show up for class today and it was an experience <laughs> if you want to know what this is about because i did not know going into this what this was about this is about a man who works as a security guard at a hospital and he works there in order to have access to corpses for his sexual endeavors and it is about his friendship slash comma relationship <laughs> slash dash i don't know relationship with a maternity doctor who works at a hospital and also goes to abortion clinics and places like this so she can um, fulfill her appetite that has to do with infants I'm gonna leave it at that I am um, resuming a true emo pose emo pose because this is a emo edgelord kind of book let's get the awkward out of the way is this book gross disturbing fucked up on every <laughs> level yes Yes, if we're talking about my spectrum of fucked up, this gets a 10 out of 10 for sure. Um, I have not read something this fucked up in a very long time, like years and years and years and years and years. The second thing that I want to talk about, I guess, because re reading these books to me and reading Splatterpunk and uh, having like encountered exploitation horror and stuff like that, they are there for a discussion to be had, not necessarily about the fucked up stuff that happens in these novels, more so about what they represent. And in this book, it's pretty clear what we're trying to talk about, and that is the feeling you have when you feel like you are an alien in society. You don't fit in wherever you go, you have trouble forming relationships with other people, you kind of hold this misanthropy in you, and you hate everybody because you feel like everybody hates you, and it's this kind of mutual thing and a second that somebody shows interest in you or you finally find someone that you can relate to that kind of feeling of alienation kind of fizzles down or kind of um not disappears but gets smaller in your soul and that makes you makes it for you to it makes it easier for you to connect to what you previously announced as something that you carry nothing but hatred for. That being said, I didn't think that this was specifically great. Um, at first I thought that the writing style was trying to be humorous, despite the extremely, extremely messed up things that were going on. But then towards the end, I don't know, I feel like it was just trying to have this kind of discussion and I don't know that it did that successfully. I'm not sure yet if I am going to rate this book on Goodreads or not, but I think if I were to give it a rating, it would probably be a three. Because aside from, you know, the shock factor, but I feel like if you're the kind of person who picks up this book, you're kind of not seeing it as shock factor. It's kind of something that you expect and you kind of want to see how far the limits can be pushed though i do feel that this was extremely try hard <laughs> extremely try hard in that regard it didn't feel mm, natural to the word or the right world that this was developed in or the writing style everything felt kind of on the nose i mean obviously face value is what you get like i discussed with um things have gotten worse since we last spoke but i don't think that this was delivered or developed or executed as well as it thought <laughs> it was because i don't think that this book is very self-aware i think that this book thinks that it's the shit whereas i don't think it's the shit <laughs> comparing it to for example exquisite corpse which i mentioned as being the most fucked up book that i've ever read before uh, I would say on fucked up level they are pretty much the same, but whereas I would recommend this to people who are looking for splutterpunk and they are looking to, for something to be extremely over the edge of normal, I would still recommend this. This, I don't know, it just didn't really do it for me in any way, shape or form. Don't think that I was expecting it to be like really carried away by the story but the discussion that was had i feel like this was much stronger uh, than this and i feel like the discussion here pretty much flopped and not because it was too short i felt like it was the perfect length it just didn't do much else for me the writing style was not my favorite there was another thing that completely irked me you know like i'm not going to you know go on a tirade about how these things are fucked up because i mean oh my god obviously they are i feel like this book it's try hard for another reason and that is that um i think the author must be in love with nick cave and the bad seeds i think and i absolutely hate and abhor <laughs> that nick cave is not named 
Like, it does not say Nick Cave on page. But his landlord and the owner of the pub in here is called Nick. The pub is called a Bad Seed. Um, the street that the main character lives on is Jubilee Street. And it references that Nick once upon a time wrote a novel about a dying rabbit, which is exactly what Nick Cave has done. It's called um, The Death of Bunny Monroe, I think. Another thing that I want to say, um, I have a lot of experience with splatterpunk and exploitation horror, especially in terms of movies. I feel like this book took a whole lot of inspiration from movies like um, the Serbian film and a German movie that I don't know if it's like an exploitation cult classic in the US or in Britain or anywhere, but I know that it is here in Europe. It's a German movie from I think the 80s called Necromantic. I felt like this was a weird combination between Exquisite Corpse and um, Necromantic, a lot, specifically Necromantic, and um, what did I mention? Serbian film. Those three, those three if you take, up the, take the most fucked up things of those and you put them together, you get that inside. I do think that the title is very um, accurate. It feels like it's dead inside. <laughs> That was, that was the books, that was the books. So this is definitely not a fan on the fucked up um, scale. Let me grab the other books. Put together, here they are. These babies. These babies. So, um, my favorite, without a doubt, things have gotten worse since we last spoke. I feel like this could be an A24 film. Um, then I would say The Body in Question, Dead Inside, and Tentacle. So this is how I would, no, I didn't do it properly, but this is how I would order them best to worst in my opinion in terms of shock factor i would say tentacle is still the worst than the body in question then i mean fucked upness yeah this and then this which makes me think wait didn't i no okay there's a slight change here so this is how i would order them in terms of how fucked up they are and yeah what else can i tell you about this have you read these what do you think <laughs> let's talk let's be messed up together it was a fun experiment i feel like i when i reach for horror i don't necessarily look for something that's gross i usually look for something that's spooky or slashery or fills a different kind of prompt you know but it was fun to kind of reach for things like this even though i didn't live up to my expectations um this is definitely not something that i would have picked up otherwise if i didn't look for it somewhere this i have had my eye on forever and i'm so glad i finally got to it same for this one um so i'm kind of glad that i did it i mean i'm 100 percent glad i did it i had a lot of fun with this actually it's not like i found four or five star reads i mean half of these are not even a four i mean none of these are even a four but still i have to say that i really enjoyed my time with the experiment you know what i mean it was fun in a different kind of way <laughs> and i really appreciate it i appreciate reaching for things that i wouldn't have necessarily reached for otherwise and it was a lot of fun so if you want to check these out i mean beware look at trigger warnings for all of these because all of them have something in them that definitely deserves trigger warnings for sure but this was a perfect um, experiment to do just before Halloween. I'm like really happy <laughs> that I decided to go for it. Let me know if you have read any of these and if you have any recommendations on what I should read next from Eric Laroca, please let me know because I definitely want to explore the writing a lot more than I have, even though I read more than I was supposed to. <laughs> let me know if you know a different messed up book that you think I would enjoy or that you enjoyed and you think that there's like a lot of value to it or that you just unabashedly had a good time with you know let me know in the comments if you don't have anything um that you want to say please leave a comment anyway leave me a skull <laughs> emoji perhaps for that inside and yeah i think that's all i have for you today i had a lot of fun i hope you had fun watching this video if you stuck around thank you so much i really appreciate it don't forget to leave a like as well and subscribe if you haven't yet that would actually really really help this channel and yeah, now I'm gonna go and film another video that you will actually see before this one <laughs> because that's how that's just how life works. But thank you so much for tuning in. It's time for me to go and do other things. So bye. <laughs>